Hello everyone and welcome to Black Snow, a mod for Half-Life 2 which a number of you on the Discord have suggested that I play. And I just love it when a mod establishes the atmosphere right off the bat with a custom background. I could not have picked a better night to play this because, let me tell you, a lot of the wind you're going to be hearing tonight is not coming from the game, but from the window beside my desk. The wind is howling tonight, and I'm certainly already in the mood for something like this. Now I believe, and I love it when a premise is like this... Hello, spooky monitor. I believe I'm playing as an IT technician at a remote Arctic base somewhere in... I think the ModDB page said Greenland? Oh, we're in the back of a truck moving across the tundra. Solid copy. Control, over and out. Oh, look None at how isolated we are. You know what they said. Standard malfunction of comms array. Last time I checked, gas masks weren't needed for a comms failure. Yeah, I guess. Okay, guys, fan out and check the building. So, uh, where's the welcome party? Aaron, any signs of the personnel? Uh, negative. I... Uh, hang on. I, I think I see something through here. I, I don't even know what we're looking at back there. Me neither. Let's just make a sweep of the main building and get out. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? Shut the fuck up, Pete. So is that supposed to be, like, body or head cam footage? And for that matter, does that mean that I'm not playing as any of these guys? Am I going to be someone that came in after? Oh no, that is me! Now, those were soldiers, and they said that they were coming to investigate a comms failure, but... According to the mod DB page, I'm just the IT guy. Okay, so before I start exploring, uh, let's get a couple of things established. So, something that I do like. I liked it showing us the back view of the van, giving us a, a look at just how isolated we are, how we could look off onto the horizon and just see nothing but flat snow and landscape. Now, something I don't like. I was kind of hoping that this character that we've been seeing the perspective of would be killed and then I would come in afterwards. I don't necessarily like the idea of starting off right away as someone who's already been through some things. Because generally, especially in a horror game that's going to leave us with a lot of questions about what's going on, I prefer it if we know everything that the character does. And that's true of the gaming medium in general. I don't like it when I don't know things that the character that I'm playing as does. Now, they did use that body cam footage to kind of keep it purposely vague. This is something that is good in horror, is that it hasn't told me what exactly is going on here. So that leaves me as the player with questions, but are they questions that my character knows the answer to? Because if so, that's not really taking advantage of the medium. But, without further ado, let's advance onto whatever's going on here. There's a lot of ambient noises playing all around me, and since I myself don't know what's happening, 
it definitely has me questioning what I should be worried about. A case of thermite. Oh, I, I have an inventory. Wait, it said press tab to display inventory, but that's not doing anything. Uh, okay. I, oh, I, this is a physics prop. I can move this out of the way. I thought it would be static, and I'd be have to... Have, have to have, uh, what is happening to me? That I'd have to find another way out. There's a lot of rattling, but... Is that something walking around somewhere, or is it... Is it just the wind moving through the shingles above the... Above the building. Can't pick any of this stuff up. I need something to hold the thermite powder. Okay, so that is what we're using. Thermite is a pyrotechnic composition of a metal powder and a metal oxide that produces exothermic oxidation reduction reaction known as thermite reaction. Yep, I understand all this. Sheet of waxed paper. Okay, I found that in the dark. Luckily, I happened to accidentally press E on that because I do not have a flashlight. There we go. Used waxed paper. And now what? How am I actually igniting this? Maybe I can use the magnifying glass to focus the beam from that lamp and ignite the powder that way. That's... sound. Okay, well, it's a good thing that icon is showing me that there's something I can pick up there, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see it at all. That's... that's pretty annoying, not gonna lie. Alright. Come on. Boom. Uh, open, please? Okay. Oh, there we go. I had to actually physically push it open. All right, we are free. And now we got to start looking for some answers. Now, I don't know what we're dealing with, but... Uh, the worst case scenario is the thing, so... Anything less than that, I'll take as a win. Contamination protocol lockdown in effect. Okay, so what do we have to do to decontaminate ourselves? Was whatever happened here? Oh. Oh! I gain health by standing next to the heater. Oh, it's like Midgard. Although I suppose this came quite a while before that. Now, because this game sounds so familiar... I think I did watch Markiplier play it, like, a million years ago, but it was so long ago that I literally don't remember a single thing about it, except that it takes place in a snowy area. Peter seems to have no power. Alright, so what else can we do in this room? Maybe try something with this keypad? No? Contamination. Yeah, yeah, I heard you the first time. How do I decontaminate? What just happened? Oh, that's an axe. I was just running around pressing E on everything. I wasn't even looking at the screen anymore. And what did it say? Ah, oh, I missed what it said on the bottom of the screen. Okay, so we probably have to kill power to this bank of computers somehow. Now, how do we do that? I wonder if there's maybe a set of cables I can follow. That usually is how electricity puzzles play out in games. Uh, that all leads to here, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere from there. This says the computer seems to have no power. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, considering everything else around it does. But maybe I have to reroute power somehow? Maybe that? What did that do besides turn off the heater? Oh, I see. The computer is back on. Amaluk Research Station, January 15th, 2007.
I don't think I'm controlling this. I think this is basically a cutscene. Welcome. How may I assist you today? Who are you? Some kind of AI? I am Jack, the station's integrated artificial intelligence system. Armor Look Station, also IPRG.3, is a urant research station on the apex of the Greenland ice sheets. The facility is funded by the Institute of Proto Science Research and CHM Polar Services. Neato. It currently serves as one of many IPR research stations located throughout Greenland. Its coordinates are variable, since the ice is moving. Amaluk Station was originally established in April 1998 in support of the Greenland Ice Sheet Project 1 deep ice coring effort. The station has since then expanded to include a research building and a state-of-the-art commodity facility for residents. The station is located 3,216 meters above sea level. A permit from the Danish Polar Center and a Greenland Home Rule Government is required to visit the station. Research at the station includes glaciology, geophysics, meteorology, upper atmosphere physics, astronomy, astrophysics, and biomedical studies. The number of scientific researchers and members of the support staff housed at the Amaluk station has always varied seasonally, with a peak population during the summer operational season. Jeez, read me a novel, why don't you? Alright, uh, facility status. I'm sorry. Due to the facility operating under 30% efficiency, all power has been diverted to vital life support systems. I do not have sufficient computing power to respond to your query. Alright, lift building lockdown then. Unlocking all doors. Lockdown overridden. See, this is the thing about placing me into the role of a character who should know some things, because... If I weren't playing as a character who had already, like, encountered something that's here... Yeah, I, I really like the idea of, in the beginning, being in a relatively safe area with no knowledge of what's going on. And I'm the one that has to lift the building lockdown in order to proceed. And in doing so, I'm presumably making a huge mistake. The problem with that is I'm playing as a character who should already have at least some idea of what's going on. I'm playing as someone who should know that this is a bad idea, so... Alright, so I still can't grab that axe. But at least I can... leave? Uh, I, I feel like maybe I am supposed to get that axe somehow. I don't know if this is a mod that's going to involve combat of any kind. I feel like I've made a big mistake ending the lockdown. Oh, look at this. I can only see a few feet in front of me. I can only see what's lighting up. Everything else is just darkness and... Whatever snow is caught reflecting in the light. The wind is howling in my ears. And I... Oh, I'd lose health while I'm out here. Door seems to be blocked. I'm gonna have to limit my exposure to the, to the snow. That's a pretty cool mechanic. I actually have to worry about freezing to death. Alright, so... I've spoken before about how good sound design can make me actually uncomfortable with in-game weather conditions, but this mod has taken it to another level and actually made it so that I can't spend a lot of time outside. And in that way, it's conditioning the player not only through the lack of visibility, but through the gameplay itself to fear that... to fear those elements. Door is locked. Story of my life. And I can't open it without, I guess, unfreezing that keypad somehow. Oh, what a convenient block of ice. Hmm. Doesn't look like I can use that chair and barrel and stuff to climb over either. But that's a hole in the ceiling. Did something break into here? 
There's some stairs down there leading to a basement area. Looks like some kind of generator room. Okay, as much as I wouldn't like to. It seems I'll have to venture back out into the darkness. Oh, when you come out, look, I know that there's a building directly in front of me. There has to be. But my visibility is just so limited. Oh, I can't see a thing. I could swear I just heard footsteps that were in mine. Off to my right. God, what's out here that's going to be stalking me? I really don't like being out there. You know you know that a game is doing a good job of putting you into the role of the character when it has you physically chilled by the in-game weather. All right. Maybe I have to move beyond these buildings. I don't like being out here. It doesn't help that I swear I can hear footsteps that aren't mine following just behind me. No, there's no way it wants me to go that far out. There's no way. Actually, come to think of it, why aren't I losing health right now? Oh, there we go. It only starts after you've been outside for a little while. The door seems to be blocked. Where am I going? Alright, I'm going to come in here and heal with that radiator. But on my way into this building this time, I think I saw more building over on the right there, so that's what I'm going to try next. Anything? Ah, here we go. A transmitter building. Well, I imagine this is what I came here to fix, if the reason we were called in was because of a comms failure. Oh, this environment feels so hostile. They made the outdoors feel truly dangerous, and I can really appreciate that. But what am I meant to do with this grappling hook? Perhaps I can climb on top of the building somehow and use that to climb in through the hole in the ceiling. Or better yet, maybe I can use it to climb in through the hole in the side of this building over here. Uh, how will I know how to use it? Use the grappling... Ah, there we go. I have to press tab to use what's in my inventory, but... It's a little strange, because it doesn't work like a traditional inventory. I don't actually get to look around in it, or at least not that I've seen. Now I wonder if we can still start to lose health even in this room, because that breach is over there. Now, to switch back into detective mode. I'm not seeing any blood, but there certainly is signs of a struggle or a quick leaving. Now, as I recall, the team that I arrived with didn't find anyone here. Don't work too hard. <laughs> I like that, having Jack Torrance there. Alright. Document room. I'm expect- There's the blood! And shotgun shells. This must have come from my team. Okay. And there's a corpse. Seemingly not torn apart or anything like that, just... dead face down in bed. And what is that? Ow! It's like some kind of... gelatinous blob just... moving under the bed. And she looks like she's been dead for some time. She's in her pajamas, no shoes on, just dead face down. All this damage might have just been from us, because 
And it doesn't look like the research staff reacted at all. What is going on here? I have a feeling we'll be introduced to whatever's going on very shortly. There's a key card, which I can presumably use if I can melt off the block of ice over the keypad in the other building. God, that is so loud. In image file. I don't have permission to access that. What's on the old internet? Joe Russell. <laughs> no, nice profile pic, guy. Hey, Liz. There seems to be a lot of interference going on in the electronics since last week. Any idea where they come from? I thought all our stuff got EMP and anti-static shields. So much for state-of-the-art. Joe. Okay, so... They were having issues with communications a couple of weeks, I guess, before they completely lost them. Ah, there's a hidden document all the way on the right. Don't know what's going on anymore. One minute feels so... long. I think I'm the last one. Shouldn't have eaten those opened rations. Not feeling so well. I think I'm going to lie down. Oh, so... She wasn't taken by surprise in her bed. Whatever happened here, she knew about it and... at least believed herself to be the last one left. She was holed up in here. And I guess something knocked this wall down and got to her. Very, very disturbing indeed. And she said that she wasn't feeling so well, so... Maybe it was something to do with the food? Or at least she believed it to be. Now that's even creepier in my opinion than... some foreign thing just coming and taking them in their sleep. Whatever was going on, it seems like it was a slow burn. Some mysterious illness that took them slowly over the course of weeks. Couple that with some interference with their communications and... It makes me wonder if whatever happened to them was intelligent, or just some force of nature that hasn't been discovered by humans yet. Rod Justice, the Wrath of Von Gutenboom. Okay. Let's open the deadbolt and see what's beyond this door. It is far too dark. But at least we can open this from the other side. And that... What is that? I saw something down that way. I definitely... While the light was on for just a couple of seconds, I definitely saw something moving... Okay, I'm, I'm out of here. The light just went off completely. It was like wispy shadows moving at the edge of the light. I only barely saw it, but I know that I did. Let's heal up. Now, I know that the keycard I got is going to work on this, but... How will I go about melting it? Maybe I can search these lockers and find some flares or something? No, but I'll have to keep this in mind for later, because surely this will be important. Unfortunately, I can't think of anywhere else to go but down that dark hallway. I've tried walking down either of the seemingly deadly directions, and I didn't get anything from my trouble but lost health. Alright. I'm going to go into meta mode here in explaining my decision to you. Now, obviously, walking down this pitch-black hallway with nothing resembling a light source is a really bad idea, especially since I'm still getting put so on edge by all these ambient noises, which bravo on that. 
I'm going to take it on faith that the game isn't going to kill me before introducing whatever the mechanics will be. And as such, I have decided I'll walk blindly down this corridor of doom. Don't think I don't hear those drum beats. I hear those ominous drum beats. I hear those ominous drum beats and I hear knocking noises. There's some more blood. I could have sworn I just heard what sounded like crying. It's certainly building up its atmosphere. I'll give it that. No. No, 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 no. I can't see anything. No! No, 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 no. No. Okay. I was being chased right there. No doubt about it, I was being chased. So, whatever this is, does it... Does it reside in the dark? And if so, am I going to be able to leave? Oh, there's so much I don't know. Which is why, and I am going to endlessly harp on this, I'm sorry. Which is why I really wish that we'd been playing that beginning part instead of just watching it in pieces. Because I feel like my character knows things that I don't, and that's a little bit immersion breaking. I feel like I'd be more into this than I am if that hadn't been set up that way. No, 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 no. Okay, so I clearly can't go that way without some kind of a light source at the very least. There's gotta be something out here for me, but I don't know what to look for. Her complexion is blotchy. Strange fungi seems to be growing on her. So it's like some kind of fungus? The computer did say before that they were doing like some kind of biomedical research here and... Hello. <laughs> Good taste. Alright, enough distractions. I gotta figure out how I'm getting down this hall. But there's definitely something in there. I was seeing those wispy shadows again, but... This time moving in a more cohesive fashion and... If I'm not mistaken. Accompanied by footsteps. But it always seems to stop at the light. So what am I doing then? I don't know how to get past that. I think maybe I should do a little bit more exploring before I commit to running down that hall. Alright, there's got to be some way to melt this. Whenever you're stuck and trying to figure out where to go... I find it's best to think about the last thing you accomplished, or the last item you picked up, and think, what changed between then and now? The last thing I picked up was a keycard in that room. Now I just need to figure out how to melt this, and I can get in here and progress. So what I need is some kind of heat source. If only I could rip this thing off the wall and bring it over here. Oh, I see. When I press tab to view the inventory, what I'm seeing is an icon on the bottom right. So right now all I have is the key card, so that's why I'm able to see that. Well, can I do something with this power box? Huh. All it's doing is giving me readings. It says generator reboot needed. So that's in the... That's in the building across the across the way. And on my left is the only place that I physically can progress, but that hallway is being patrolled by whatever supernatural being that seems to be a lot more than a fungus. What is that noise? Is that the noise you make? Yep, there you are! Ow! Oh, you hit hard, too. Okay, 
Okay, so that's definitely... I, I definitely don't think I can survive in that hallway. I was considering just making a run for it, but I really don't think that's going to happen. Alright, uh, I can't think of anything else. The plan is Operation YOLO. That's it. That's all I got. Are they maybe... Are the lights maybe flickering in sequence, actually? If so, then perhaps what I can do is wait for this spotlight to come on. And then I'll be able to progress some more. That is, of course, if it doesn't just do that. Alright, come on. Come back on, lights. Come on. Something I actually do like about this creature that kind of adds to the mystery is how it manifests to me as, like, a cloud. And yet, it produces the sounds of footsteps when it chases me. It's very otherworldly, and I can't wait to learn more about whatever this thing is. Yes, yes, you keep trying to do that. Can you please just... I feel like it's been forever since this light turned on. Yes, thank you. No. No! That was like a scream. I don't understand this. I don't, I don't understand this part at all. If I just run to the end this way, yes, 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 this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, yes, okay. Oh, it seems like I really am just supposed to YOLO it. No. No, you don't. I see, I see you in the doorway, and I see wisps out there. You're not alone. There's more than one of you, isn't there? All right. What more can I do? useful back here? It's too dark to read. Uh, is there a light switch or something? Clearly I need to restore power somehow. But how? Yeah. Ah, I can push this out of the way. There we go. But ow! Oh, come on! How can you do that? How can she slap? How can she slap? I was clearly standing in the light. Oh, I can open that door now, at least. I didn't realize I was supposed to be... Oh, come on! Does not seem to work? Okay, so I can't heal. H how does saving work? That's going to be kind of important to know. I'd hate to go all the way back to the beginning if I die and do all this again. Can I just crawl through here? Oh, I can! Alright, well that's useful. Alright. But it seems dark over here. There's one over there. Yeah, that exit may not be my salvation if it's dark on the other side. Yeah, let's try it. Let's go, go, go. Please be a loading screen. Thank you. You know, the alternative was that I was looking at pitch blackness, and that would not have suited me. This, sadly, is not much better. Oh, we're outside again. And we've got a dog skull. Alright, just follow the beacons. Follow the beacons, that's all I can do. Am I going over here should be a door gotta move no it snowed in okay I've got to find somewhere else then and I got to do it quick because I don't have a lot of health and I'm freezing to death come on not that way this is not good this is not good even getting back inside doesn't mean I can heal now Maybe in that direction? Come on, there's gotta be something. 
There's got to be something. Come on. 30 seconds to live. Yes. Yes. No, come on. Come on. Well, I'm dead. I'm dead. There's nothing I can do about this. Side, so I stop losing health. But honestly, I don't think there's anything I can do. I don't think there's any way for me to heal. I don't think there's anywhere I can actually go. Yep. Does not seem to work. I, I think I just have to die and find out what the reloading scheme is. Let's try running this way. Only thing I can think of. Yep, into the closet. Uh... Oh, you can open the door. That's great. oh, that's great to know. Unfortunately, it's too dark to see anything, and this stupid black and white effect isn't helping my visibility any. But there's nothing here to begin with. So coming in here was a complete waste of time. Kill me. Come get me. It's saved right here. It's saved when I come in and out. It saves when I enter a building, so I'm literally stuck. This game, this mod has so much going for it. The atmosphere is so perfect. But it's just taking me right out of it because I'm spending so long just running back and forth trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. There's, like, such a lack of foresight when it comes to the save system where... Okay, I got a piece of rebar. What do I do with that? Okay, I guess I can pry my way into here. Where it's like, it, it seems like I could very easily get stuck with no way to progress. Ugh. More dead dogs in the kennel. I imagine this is some kind of reference to the thing. Actually, I wonder if I can heal using these, uh... I wonder if I can heal using these flares. Will that give me life-saving heat? No. Master and dog in their last moment. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like these are gonna heal me. But, can I use them to melt the ice? I can't, so... So what do I do then? Because I was really banking on flares as the means of doing this. Have you guys got any information to share with me? I really hope these aren't in limited supply because... Oh. There's a room here. Okay! You know, I just realized something. This door is locked from the outside. And these dogs aren't just frozen, they... have these, like, blotches on their skin. And this one's... harpooned to a wall. It's like something was wrong with these dogs, and... whatever was wrong with them may have also been wrong with this guy, and... he was locked in by the others. Some kind of bioweapon, maybe? Huh. Alright. Now we only have three flares. Pop them down right here. Go get another one. And this one will carry with us. And that'll only give us a limited time to do what we need to do. Locked. Crap. Okay. Uh, how long do these things last? The answer is probably not long enough. I'm assuming that the answer is not long enough. Okay, flare, flare, flare right here. But, oh, c it can get me while I'm holding the flare? Was that a bug, or... 
I don't understand the mechanics here. Okay, but what am I looking for in here? And I have limited chances to look. Uh, can't melt these. What am I doing here? Ah, there. Okay. Stupid environment with its unlimited players that never run out. Why can't I pick those up? Okay, so I've gotten up here, but what has that done for me? More importantly, am I trapped now that this is burned out? Thanks for breaking my fall, empty box. I'm not going to make it very far if I try to run back, so whatever's going on with this laptop, it better be worth it. Maybe I can restore power using that box. Snowcat list. Ignition key. Probably in lodging. I remember Lars was sending it to somebody. Navigational map. Need to find the other Pro Protossi outposts? Biodiesel. The snowcat only runs on biodiesel. Might look for it in the generator building, which is where I'm trying to go. Tire link. Tire is broken. Need to find link to fix. Got it. Managed to get some cans from storage. Observational notes number three. I've managed to elude the black snow infestation for the last three days and have begun taking qualitative observational notes in regards to this virulent form of fungi. This is my third entry. I hope that once I make contact with the other Protosci stations, I'll be able to make use of this data in the eradication or subjugation of the organism. Known facts. Grows in multicellular hypae filaments, which would make it common to mold. Origin unknown. Hypothesis relates to permafrost melting. Seems to behave like opportunistic pathogen. Those that were ill displayed signs of infection earlier than the rest. Resistant to cold and heat. However, seems to be unable to tolerate light of all spectrums. Does not grow on only dead organic material. Adaptable to all surfaces and organisms living or dead. Mode of transmission unclear. Seems to be via, smore, via spores, not s'mores, although I could do with some s'mores in this cold. Could be airborne. Wish Adam was here to consult. Hosts may act as carriers for spores, further propagating it. Rapid cycle of growth engulfs internal organs in a matter of days after infection. Death occurs within three to four days. No known cure. Dehumidifiers minimally effective. Only delays onset. Victims not dead in the same sense. Mold seems to eject a sort of spore cloud that still contains the victim's consciousness. How did you determine that? Absolutely absurd and improbable. Not sure what to make of this hypothesis. What do you mean you're not sure what to make of this hypothesis? It's your hypothesis. Vinegar offers some effect if consumed or applied topically. A good protection, but not a remedy after infection. I wonder if vinegar will act as some kind of healing item? Hazmat suit ineffective. Mold seems to be able to bore holes through materials after a period of time. Acidic properties? Displays some sort of basic intelligence? Avoids area with light and drawn to darkness instinctively. This will likely be the last entry in this chronicle. We'll attempt a last data gathering venture into the main building and acquire the ignition key so I can get out of here. Well, the snowcat's still here, so we see how that turned out. 
Ah, so now pressing tab will display the snowcat item list in addition to the inventory. Now as I sit in this concrete oasis amid a desert of deadly darkness, I've taken a few minutes break to try and change gears and put myself back into horror mode because sometimes when I get really frustrated with something, such as if something's really difficult or if I can't figure out what I'm supposed to be doing, I'll kind of get put, I'll kind of get taken out of it, and it kind of leads me to not be as objective with it as I should be. So that's what I've done here. Now I'm going to open this, and I'm hoping, yes, that restored power to the room, and we have lights on. And I'm betting this propane torch and welder's mask will enable me to open up those melty, uh, those melty Miltersons that I need to melt. Just completely lost train of thought mid-sentence. Now, I can't take the welding mask with me, which seems like it would be smart. Is there anything else I need from here? Now, how I feel about this document that we read on the laptop depends a lot on how the rest of this story plays out. If there's nothing more to it, and everything that's been said in that document is correct, then it's really just an information dump and telling us too much too early and in a really wordy way that doesn't allow the game itself to tell the story. I really dislike the trope of explaining everything through notes. I want it to happen through my own experiences and through events in the gameplay itself. Now, it does speculate that this fungus may be something that was unearthed by the melting of permafrost, and that's something that I believe is actually a concern in real life. Ancient organisms that have been frozen for thousands of years suddenly being exposed to creatures who have no immune system to deal with it. However, obviously the bigger element here is the fact that it seems to display some kind of intelligence. And that is a little bit more interesting. And you know, they, they do say that they don't know where it came from. The idea of being released from underneath the ice is just a theory. So maybe, even though that would make sense, maybe there's something a little more going on here. Let's use that propane torch and melt that ice right off. Good for us. Oh, that's a long way down. That's a long way down. Should I be heading back for the generator room first? Although, since it's given us all these objectives at once, it seems like maybe it's going to be a little bit more open-ended with regards to how we actually get this thing up and running again. And if so, that's a really interesting way to deliver the pacing and progression. Now, if only I can complete the arduous... Hello corpse who seems to have fallen down. If only I can complete the arduous FPS task of getting onto the ladder. There we go. Oh, this is one of my guys. No! No, 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 no. It's suddenly freezing down here. No, I gotta get out of here. Where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Oh, why don't I just pull out the propane torch? I have no health. I can't get out of here. There's no, there's nothing I can do. God, this low health is going to be such a problem, isn't it? Alright, let's try that again. God, this lack of health is going to screw me over so many times if it relies on the cold as a mechanic like this. Because I haven't seen anywhere I can heal in quite a while. And then that closes. Okay, and then what am I supposed to do about that? It's not helped by the fact that at this low level of health, my visibility is very poor, and it's doing these camera effects down here where it's like I can't even see what I'm doing. Okay, so am I just not supposed to come down here at all? Because I can't see anything useful. Now, I think there's also a melted lock on the building beside me. Come on. There we go. Oh, this just takes us around to here. That's sadly not very useful to me. Hopefully I can make my way back to that original, uh... 
to that original room without... I'm going to head back and try to get into the generator room first, because that'll enable me to heal up at the very least, because there's a radiator in there that still seems to be working. Alright, in the end I just kind of did it. Just kind of YOLO'd it. Alright, now let's get back out there. And see if we can't heal up. That'll put us in a much, much better place. Now let's get in here. And use that key card. Now this power box is broken, but... We're not totally stalled. We can still come down here. What kind of basement is this? It looks more like caves than any actual basement that you'd need. Why is this the basement of the generator room? Well, I guess these are steam pipes, but... <sighs> these caverns really don't need to be this big for that. Uh, biodiesel pressure. So I suppose I need to be turning these, but I can't. I need to build up the pressure, I guess, and start the generators, and then I can use the computer to get a full rundown of what's going on in the facility. Ah, uh, there's instructions right here. Acquire fuel, refill the tank, wait for gauge to go green, and activate the reset. Which presumably is this. So I need to find gas? Ah, this opens up. I forgive you? That's a corpse! How did you end up down here? Okay, it seems this is just an easter egg, but... What a disturbing one indeed. Ah, gas and gas. Two cans of biodiesel. Now the question is, am I supposed to be using these to start the generators? Or refuel the snowcat? Am I making a choice here? Ah, I can use... I can use the propane torch on that. But doing so is not necessarily safe. I'm going to need some kind of light source for that. Question is, how do I go about that? I was kind of hoping this would be some kind of shortcut so that I can get back more easily without having to run through that corridor every time. I'm just going to YOLO it again. I'm just going to do that every time because I'd honestly rather take like the 20 damage then figure out what's going on with these lights. Like, they come on occasionally, and that's useful. But... Oh, crap, 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 crap. Oop. I just dodged around you and found a hallway I didn't even know was here because of the darkness. Okay! Don't like how you can open doors. That is so scary. I kind of like how this is done. Um, although I wish it was more scripted sequences and less of kind of a passive enemy. But I like how they do actually charge through into the light uh, when they chase you into a room. 
It, it, it adds that little bit of aggression to it and makes you actually kind of feel like almost a sense of malice from it. Like that one last desperate lunge to try and get you. It's pretty cool. Alright, now what am I looking for here in the infirmary? You look like you've... Oh, that's a pile of trash. I thought it was like a burned corpse or something. Alright, so in here there's another radiator, so that's good to know. But it doesn't seem like this room actually does anything for me. Besides be another port in the storm. And we should be able to enter on the right side of the garage now. And we can use the biodiesel to refuel the snowcat. Okay, or do I need to, do I add things as I go, or do I need to... Do I need to do everything all at once? Come on, there we go. Filled the tank with a can of biodiesel. And that leaves us with... What are the other three things? We need the ignition key, the navigation map, and the tread link. Come on. Every once in a while, I'm getting this bug where it won't let me exit a computer screen. It's really, really annoying me. It's happened several times already, and it gets fixed by just... Random key mashing, usually. Now, I can melt that, but I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing down there. Like, maybe I'll be able to... Let me exit and come back, because that's how saving works. And maybe I'll be able to actually see what I'm doing down there now that I have some health. Now this is one of my guys, actually. This isn't a researcher. Yeah, he was part of our assessment team. Uh, can I do something relating to melting this ice? No, it's still gonna put these effects on my screen so that I can't tell what's going on. Okay, so what do you want me to do here? And it's not gonna let me leave, right? Oh, no, I can. That looks like some kind of black growth. It looks like tree roots, but... I don't think there's any trees around here. Is that maybe the origin of the stuff? Yeah, there's some growing right here as well. And for all that, it doesn't look like there's really anything of use down here. Wait. That body is gone. What happened to him? How did I not notice that? Where did he go? There's a blood stain right there. Uh. Wait. Come on. Yes. Oh, I can light these barrels. And they act as a healing post. Or a hurting post. I cannot stand, especially when I'm trying to record a Let's Play, just running around trying to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. It is so tedious and boring, and it takes me out of any scares there could potentially be. Okay, do I still have fuel? Because it doesn't say... Okay, apparently I still have fuel, even though it was removed from my inventory. Okay, I am a b the reason I haven't been doing this whole process this entire time is because I assumed I was making a choice. I can use the biodiesel here, or I can use it on the snowcat. Now, I had checked my inventory to see if I still had a tank, but I'm about 80% sure that it wasn't there after I used it on the snowcat, so I assumed I had made a choice. Yeah, so I'm checking tape now, and you can clearly see that when I check inventory immediately after filling up the snowcat, the gas is gone from my inventory, which is why I thought I couldn't go back and fuel this up. Alright, so with that out of the way... Jesus Christ, that's annoying. Let's see what we can do here. Now I should be able to reset the generator switch. Hi! 
Hi, okay, you can just do that, I guess. Goodbye. I don't know what I was actually supposed to do about that. I guess that's just free damage on me. See, this is what I'm saying, is that this would have been an opportunity for absolute panic. I reset the generator, and in that moment, I realize what that means as the lights all go out. But nope, instead it's just, yeah, we're gonna put this right here. You gotta run back and push the button, and there's not really any gameplay or anything to it. Now I'm hoping that what this means is that some of those back areas in the lodging area will now have the lights on. Plus, let's not forget, the computer in the starting area said that we would need more energy and therefore more computing power to be able to read some of the logs, so we'll see what's going on with that too. Okay, now that the generators are back up and running, we should be able to see facility status. Please wait while I run your query. Generators. Online. You're welcome. Catering. Offline. Life support. Partially functional. Communications. Offline. Warning. Communications to other research compounds within the area have ceased for longer than five days. Emergency beacon has activated due to prolonged radio silence. Assessment team should be dispatched shortly. So, does that refer to me? Or does that refer to Goodbye. what's going to happen? Are they going to be sending additional teams? And is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yes, the lights are on in here. Now we are able to make some progress. Okie dokie. All of this... Okay, I need to kind of recontextualize my thoughts on this game right now in the interest of being fair. So, basically, that experience right there came down to what was essentially, as far as I can tell, a bug. Now, my criticisms up until this point have largely had to do with what I perceived as a lack of direction and having to kind of fumble around in the dark, no real idea where I'm going or what I'm going to do when I get there. Now, it seems like what I was supposed to do is turn on that generator, which I've been able to do for some time. The misunderstanding was caused by a bug, which caused the gas tanks to not show in my inventory, which they now both are. So I don't know what's going on with these inventory bugs, but they're causing a lot of confusion and they're causing a lot of problems that I should not have been having. Now that we can get a better look at this... Ah, we can actually pry these boards off. Alright. Oh, this place is much, much larger than it looked like in the dark. Alright, so these are the back areas that we could access from her room. Before we do anything else, let's go and read some of those papers that it said it was too dark to read. The only reason I figured this out was because those papers said it was too dark to read, which indicated to me that we were going to have to turn on the lights in this area. I thought there was something around the corner there when I saw that plant. Really weird sounds coming out of this phone. So, this is a transfer request. Name Azad Junaid. Uh, we'll keep that name in mind. And it says reason for transfer personal. Did this guy maybe know something that nobody else did? Now, let's see what's in this Lars's locker. I cannot read that. Ah, this one opened. Uh... Okie doke, I'm gonna take that as an easter egg. 
so clearly we need to find some more key cards. Because thus far, the only lead we have is that somebody in housing has that ignition key. Alright then, time to enter unexplored territory. What is that noise? I don't know if I've heard that one before. Uh, these are all the personal quarters. Maybe I can find some key cards in here. Now we have ourselves an artist. A lonely artist, apparently. Unidentified foreign object in ice core. Object seems to be organic in nature. A seed of some kind? Preliminary test dates the object back to around 120 BC. Very odd. Junaid and Adam have extracted the object from the ice core for further study, but is returned to the ice core storage at the end of every day. I think this could be a fossil of some kind. Sunflowers. He waits in the field. What does that mean? And here's an email from this guy. He's the one that put in the request for the transfer. I was wondering if we're still down for the movie tonight? I think it's my turn to pick this time. Shall we say Miami Vice? I know you hate that kind of movie, but think of it as payback for Devil Wears Prada. Besides, it's been a while since we got a break from IC-28. I'll bring the wine. Ah, uh, here's his room. And his laptop. Oh, look at that big fatty. Clarice. The transfer form. Clarice, by the time you read this, I would have no you would have no doubt heard about my transfer out of here, either from me or from someone else. I want you to know this is not about you or us. I figured my leaving quietly would help shorten the process of separation. There are matters that I now have to attend to in my home country. There are IPR facilities there as well, which I'll be applying to. But please don't try to find me. My family will never accept what we are. I'm very sorry it's come to this. Know that I'm very happy that I met you, but I'm afraid our time together is over. I'll be leaving next month. Thank you for loving me as much as I loved you. I wish we had more time. I wish we... And apparently they had less time than they thought. But I still haven't found anything useful in these rooms. What? 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 Ow! Wait! What counts as darkness? What? Okay, so I guess that's fine. Just break your own rules. Ah, I have to come through this entire area again. I hadn't tried this Adam Sanders room yet. And there's Adam Sanders. Do you have anything of use for me? And now you're gonna break that down? I can't sprint. I cannot sprint. And now that's over, I guess, and you're trapped in the middle there. Is that flickering something that's going to keep happening, or are you gone for good now? Alright, doesn't really seem like there's any way for me to avoid damage there. What is this? 
immersion cell. Okay, well, if out here counted as darkness, then in there certainly will. Gym. Shower 2. That looks like darkness, and oh, it's giving me so much more to explore all at once. A three-way shared room, I guess. Ah, uh, yes, copyrighted posters. <laughs> I guess slightly altered. Ah, oh, what a staple of source mapping. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, if you can't tell, I am comp... <laughs> As many breaks as I have taken, I am completely out of it at this point. I am not in any mood to be scared, and honestly, I'm not finding it all that scary. Ooh. Bathroom stalls. Maybe this will get scary. Ah, oh, there's a vent up there. Okay, we'll come back to that. Dark. It's very dark down here. It seems like so far I've been safe in these rooms, no matter how dark they are. But they don't really seem to offer anything. I haven't actually found anything useful in these rooms yet. Let's go. Finally. Some kind of hammer? Okay, well, what do I do with that? I don't think swinging a hammer is going to do much against a cloud of toxic spores. Brave the darkness and try this shower. See, that, that's the annoying thing, is that it's so inconsistent about what actually counts as darkness. Like, obviously pitch black is dark, but when the lights were flickering in here, that was dark, but in here isn't, and that room down the hall isn't? Oh, this loops around to the gym. And that's now unlocked from the other side. But what does all this do for me? Can't leave? I need something sharp to prick off the key. What is it, like encased in a block of concrete or something? I need something sharp to prick off the key. Um, okay, where would I get something sharp? Maybe I need, like, a hammer and a chisel or something, of which I already have the hammer. But where would I get something like a chisel? Okay, so this happens when I enter the immersion chamber. Is this meant to be literally happening? I'm gonna guess no. I didn't even close the door. Come on, let me through. sign of external injury. How did she die? Suicide probable. What different mod have I just shifted into? Did I get my... I got my rusty chisel is what I got. Okay. Okay. 
Also, I must say that from a puzzle-solving perspective, it is not logical to expect the player to immerse themselves in a pitch-black area when the mechanics have already established that standing in the dark equals death. Like, you can't tell me that if an area is dark, I have to turn on the lights, and then make it so that in order to progress, I need to go into the dark. That makes no sense. Out you go. The kitchen is open now. This was not the case before. No. Nope, 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 die. Uh, it's kind of cool, though, how it does actually react when I get close with the flare. I'm going to have to find more flares, though. Uh, just stepped over a body on the ground. Alright, where else can I go? Not that way. But there's more flares. Now I can use this flare to either go... Wait... A piece of x-ray film in the stew pot. Uh, okay, was that an examine or did I pick something up? Because if I pick something up, it sure isn't showing in my inventory. But of course, we all know how unreliable that can be. Now, I can either use the flare to crouch under that door over there or take it to the right. And I'm going to take it to the right because that seems like the more likely progression. But what am I supposed to do if I just run out of flares? You recede. Get back. No, you don't. Server room. Ice core samples. Okay, whatever this thing is, the plague probably originated in this room. Oh, wait, I can probably climb up here and up and over through this window, or at least see where I'm going. Ah, I'm still carrying the hammer. Wait, so that there's. I still have the hammer, so there's another thing that's not showing in my inventory. Oh, I see. The floor is lava. Or in this case, the floor is ancient evil fungus with a mind of its own. Okay. That doesn't seem to have done much for me. I couldn't see anything in there that I need. Ah, I can open the fridge. I got a piece of x-ray film. Okay, but what does all of that do for me? I feel like I'm solving a puzzle I haven't even seen yet. Ah, the server room. Presumably this is where I was called in to work on, but this door is locked, so... I don't imagine I'll be doing much in here for a while. This looks too dark to work in. See, that's the thing. It's so inconsistent which, with what actually counts as darkness. It's so frustrating. Conqueror Worm. Companion. Second Wind. Enlightenment. So, oh, it's a puzzle. I'm supposed to be placing the different sheets down. And I suppose I have to figure out the order? Okay, so I guess I was supposed to come in here. Can't really see anything. I don't know if this is like a texture or lighting bug or what. Got a piece of x-ray film, sure.
somebody purged the server. They tried to wipe all the data that was here, I guess. Who was that? No. No, no, no. That was a person. That was a person that tried to lock me in. Apparently unsuccessfully. What was that about? That's the weirdest new development in a while. So I think that's got to be right. Now the last one is Companion. Take two, four four nine one seven, four four nine one seven, four four nine one seven, four four nine one seven. And we're in. This all looks very dark. This all looks very, 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 very dark, very, very, very dark, very, 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 very dark. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. How am I supposed to do anything? Oh god, that is so annoying. Okay, now what? Got the navigational map. What is, what is this? Oh, there's a <laughs> there was a bomb behind the map that went off when I removed it. That's <laughs> That's odd. Pretty sky, though. Uh, so what am I doing now? Is that the end? That can't be the end. Did I, like, get the wrong ending or something? Because that wasn't an ending. <laughs> like, it just kind of stops. There was another item that I didn't get on the list, the tire link, but I don't know if there was anywhere that I could have found that. Uh, okay. So that was Black Snow, and it was pretty disappointing. And that's a shame, because I went in so ready to like it. It seemed to have such great atmosphere and custom assets and mechanics, but it just threw that all away by frustrating me at every turn. The walkthrough that I started watching towards the end to find the last x-ray was 17 minutes. So that's how quickly you can beat this game when you know exactly what you have to do. And I was held back, not even by not knowing what had to be done, but by the game's UI basically lying to me. Because look, I didn't know if there were multiple endings or if there were choices I would have to make or what. So when I picked up the fuel, I kind of assumed that it would be used up when I used it on either the generator or the snowcat. So I opted to do the snowcat first for safety, and I would go back and do the generator if I still had gas left over. Now I assumed that I didn't, because as soon as I did, the gas icon was removed from my inventory. And I never would have thought to just try it anyway, if it weren't for the fact that I couldn't read those papers in the dark. Which reminds me, let's talk about the dark. So the primary form of gameplay in this mod is avoiding dark and cold areas like the plague. And you know, that's a really cool way of doing things. It keeps you on the move while you're outside, keeps you from wandering too far away without having to fence the whole environment in, allows the use of radiators as a method of healing, and when it comes to the dark areas indoors, it helps keep what's actually chasing you mysterious. And in that way, it makes a clear distinction between the safe and dangerous situations, and kind of makes you panic a little bit when you have to do the dangerous things anyway. Or at least that's how it should work, but in practice, I just couldn't get a read on what the game considered to be darkness. 
So sometimes it seemed like even the smallest amount of light would protect me. And at other times I was getting hit even in areas that I thought were pretty bright. Meanwhile, there were other times where it wanted me to wade through a sea of darkness and nothing happened, like in the IT room. So like, how was I supposed to figure that out? Another time was in the immersion room. I had to walk into the dark to make that trigger. Like, when you so frequently require me to contradict your core mechanics like that in order to progress, yeah, I'm gonna get stuck a lot. It had so much good atmosphere and environment design, but the gameplay was just so frustrating and nonsensical that it took me right out of it and killed any enjoyment I was ready to have. While the nature of the threat itself was pretty original and cool, I'm really disappointed with the way they told the story. It's pretty much done exclusively through info dumps, which I can't stand. Look, I know nobody likes it when I'm negative on a game. I know it's not enjoyable to watch me play a game I'm not enjoying. Something that I'll do sometimes if I recognize this happening is I'll take a break and come back a few minutes later and kind of reset and start taking it as if the previous thing didn't happen. I did that for Lost in Vivo and it worked out because I ended up loving Lost in Vivo. With this, I took like three or four breaks and every time I came back there was immediately something new pissing me off. So. I don't think that's on me. Me from the future now, because I can't believe I forgot to mention this in my closing statement. I think I could have forgiven a lot of the problems with this mod if it hadn't been so light on the scares. Now as I mentioned, if I get frustrated with a game, I'll sometimes take a break in order to kind of mentally reset and allow myself to immerse myself again. And I think I would have been able to get back into it a lot more easily if it had actually kept me mentally engaged by having unexpected scares, by having things happening throughout, and new ideas and concepts that I would have to learn, instead of just giving me like one mechanic and two or three puzzles that never really changed the status quo. The first encounter with an enemy in that dark hallway was really, really scary, because it was pitch black and I couldn't see what I was actually running from. And then once you got into the light, there was that last lunge where all you would see was those wisps of black smoke. And later on, once you start to get the idea that it's like a, like a sentient cloud of black fungal spores that you can't see in the dark, it just makes it all the more disconcerting when you then think back to the fact that you've been hearing footsteps and distorted screams coming from within. Beyond that, there's only like one or two scripted scares. And so my mind is dull for most of that runtime, just running back and forth trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do. And so in that way, what was at first really, really scary just kind of becomes part of the environment. Especially when you realize that that note you found in the garage really is all there is to know. Add in that total non-ending and let's face it, non-beginning and you're left with something that just feels unfinished, like we only got the middle part of the full experience. And in retrospect, there are hints of that all over the place, like that oil drum outside that you could set a light to act as a port in the storm and regain your health. Only, there's nothing you need to do over in that direction. But, if you somehow liked this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you'd like me to do, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will link in the description. There we have an awesome community who loves to talk about all things creepy and comfy. And as always, I will see you in the next one.